to be the safest community in the country. But we can't do it without your help. No, they can't do it without our help. They need us to get out there and videotape Mesa police officers. All these incidents were only brought to light because of cameras and video. Ever since the body camera came out, these officers have been caught doing wrong. So we at the Mesa Police Department need citizens out there videotaping our officers in the line of duty and sending them into our police department with a complaint form. That's how these officers are held accountable. Two Mesa police officers tackling, punching, and tasering. The people on the other side of these blows accused of minor infractions like jaywalking and cutting through a park after hours. Their police body cameras captured the chaotic encounters, resulting in three excessive force complaints in just over two years, all in a city. This officer, I put the caption up top there. The officer in the gray hair has been on Mesa Police Department for many years. He has never climbed in rank because of his, his attitude in the police department. He's only been, he's had many complaints put on him, but none of them has ever been proven until these videotapes have been shown that's why he's never climbed in rank um been there for many years and has never climbed in rank because he likes beating people's ass that's Al officer caldrone uh we've had many dealings with him myself and direct d and other cop watchers already plagued with concerns about police violence. This, this is Mesa SWAT officer Aaron Pugh in March 2018. He's one of three officers holding down Cole Spencer face down in the dirt. Pugh rams his knee into Cole's head twice and slams his face into the ground twice. But it's about to get a lot worse. <laughs> And there's tasering. Cole stunned seven times for a total of 36 seconds. It's still not over. Officer Pugh grabs Cole's neck with both hands and squeezes, hoping Cole would go unconscious so we could control him, he said in his police report. And Officer Aaron Pugh was accused of excessive force again this July. <laughs> He shot beanbag rounds at Lorenzo Jones while serving a warrant, even though Jones had his hands up and his small children nearby. There was no need for this. Under the law, he was complying. He had his shirt off, no weapons on him. He wasn't a threat. Police found Pew's use of force was justified against Jones. The ABC 15 investigators Did you hear that bullshit? showing Pew received seven citizen complaints total over eight years, five alleging excessive, unnecessary, or improper use of force, one for alleged bias policing and discourtesy, and one for failing to follow policy for the beanbag shooting of a dog. 
Mesa police found Pew violated policy in the dog case, but he was exonerated or otherwise cleared in the other six complaints. Surveillance video shows 33-year-old Robert Johnson leaning against a wall using his phone. There's police Officer say they Cal asked Brown. him to sit down. When he didn't immediately comply, four Mesa police officers repeatedly punch and knee him before Johnson falls to the ground. Johnson's head was then smashed against the elevator. He was eventually handcuffed to his feet, face covered. Crawl towards me! The Department of Justice launched a civil rights violation investigation after this video surfaced showing a Mesa police officer fatally shooting Daniel Shaver in January 2016. Shaver was unarmed. The officer, Philip Railsford, was later acquitted of murder and removed from the police force. Yeah, Steve, union officials are actually fighting to help Officer Railsford get his job back. He was fired from Mesa PD today, and now union officials are saying that the city is just trying to protect themselves. Blurry body camera video picks up one crackdown that's now under the microscope. Why are you, why are you running? Now, when they release video to the public, Mesa PD always scrambles it or makes it to where you can't see it to, to protect the public. Right. Several intense seconds go by. This jaywalker not giving up. Police say he was trying to destroy evidence. The weed. Officers pleading for cooperation. Blows to the head and face caught on body camera. Other witnesses see the struggle and hit record. More officers arrive to find stunned witnesses. Are you involved or not? Do you see what happened? I've seen the police hit him in the face. What happened? Like five times. Mesa police officer Nathan Chisler is accused of a crime, aggravated assault for shooting an unarmed man in the hip last December. Key evidence, body-worn camera video from multiple officers. Months after ABC 15's initial public records request, Mesa police finally released the video with every second intentionally blurred by the department. So you can't see anyone's face or all they the details. They intentionally You're about blur to see it. Some photos and make no mistake, they are full of injuries. Now this incident happened after police were called to a woman's home to check on her grandson. The question, though, that remains tonight, how did she get those injuries? I've talked to police out, out in front of my house for 30 years, and there was never anybody that ever behaved like this. Mesa police were called to Virginia's home to check on her grandson. Virginia says it was a simple welfare check. Police say the call was for a suicidal person with a gun. When officers arrived, that person they went to check on did cooperate. But while police sorted it out, Virginia went out front. And that's when she says her conversation with an officer ended with her injury. Grabbed my, my wrist real hard and, and just, just, I didn't know anybody <coughs> told you so hard and hurt so bad. I said, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I guess the next I was waking up on the asphalt next to a police car. In a statement, Mesa police admit to using force on Virginia, but say it happened because she tried to go back inside and the officer was grabbing her to protect her. Police did find her grandson with a BB gun inside that home. Virginia, meantime, was ticketed for obstructing justice. Ticketed for obstructing justice. Now, they say that they found the kid with a BB gun inside the house. There's no video or, or evidence of that. The police can say anything they want. Bruised and bloodied from the beanbag gun and the taser probes, Tony Neerum says he was with his girlfriend and some friends watching Resident Evil back in January when police showed up at his door around 8 p.m. Mesa Police Department. And Once again, inside, the video is blurred. They showed up. I just assumed they were there because my movie was up loud. Neerum refused police inside unless they had a warrant. The law says they don't need a warrant if they think someone's in imminent danger. Still, police had to make their case through the door. Look, I just need to talk to somebody to make sure everyone's okay, nobody's dead, dying, or bleeding because of the call that we got. 
But ABC 15 has discovered that police were initially there for something totally different in a different apartment. Well, they had their uh, screen door open, and I was walking by, and she asked why he, he hit her. And when I was coming up, like, she was screaming, like, why are you hitting me? That 911 caller reported domestic violence in apartment 121. Scene photos, reports, and body camera video show police headed to apartment 122 next door. Being a former police officer, um, I was shocked. Attorney Anthony Ramirez represents Niram. He plans to file a suit against police for how they handled the situation. I was the victim of a brutal assault at the hands of Mason police officers. I was tased. I was punched over and over by multiple cops. And I was gouged in the eye. They laughed at me while I laid in a pool of my own blood. You gotta be a man, man. Man up. And I'm left to defend myself in court. And what happens to these guys? Nothing. Nothing. On the ABC 15, Zach Crenshaw uncovering one Mesa police officer who's recently been disciplined twice within a year, both times for his use of force. This is the man. This is Officer Greg Clark. Dangerous After officer. Accused of trespassing, surrenders. Does Mesa police have a culture problem? No, we do not. But they may have a Greg Clark problem. This 2018 policy violation led to a 20 hour suspension. But as you'll see, that discipline didn't stop him from another reprimand. This officer is as bad as Officer Caldron. Um, we have many dangerous officers on Mesa PD Police Department that we need to get rid of. Manned over his use of force just a year later. Get up. Since 2019, Officer Clark has been suspended 130 hours, roughly 16 work days. The unpaid discipline stems from two incidents, the most recent involving this man, Mitchell Knudsen. In September 2019, when confronted for sleeping in a private parking lot, Mitchell decides to run. Also, real quick, um, he decides to run because of the way the officers are starting to handle him. And several other incidents, he's stopped for no reason and decides to take off because he knows that he's going to get his ass beat by these officers because it's the same officers that beat him before. The female officer catches him, cuffs him, and then Clark shows up. Just help me stand him up. In the video, blurred by Mesa PD, blurred. Clark can be seen kicking the handcuffed man, then pulling him up by his hair. Oh, Remember that teen accused of trespassing? In March 2018, the young man runs from Clark and another bike officer. They eventually catch up to him, and he's clearly surrendering. When Clark rams his knee into the teen's back, cuffs the kid, pulls him up, and seconds later, sweeps his leg, knocking him to the ground. Then, Clark picks up his cell phone, tosses it at the wall, cracking the screen even more. A sergeant later wrote Clark demonstrated, quote, reckless, poor decision-making. The now current chief, Ken Cost, put Clark on a seven-step corrective action plan which stated, failure to immediately improve may result in disciplinary action, including termination. But just three months after that corrective action was complete, Clark did this. Okay, 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 okay. That's unacceptable. For Jeff Lahassan, it began last October. I we filmed this up. one. There was two cops out front of my house. Lahassan's ex-wife called police on him for texting her. After their divorce, a court order says they're only supposed to communicate through email. A routine call that turned quickly after a simple misunderstanding when police asked him to read the texts and emails. This is ridiculous, just like you. Well, that, no, that, no, no, that's it. No, 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 he's reading the email. I'm sorry. I'm going to punch in the face. So, <laughs> just tell me you're going to punch me in the face? Hey, read you know your what? email. Did you just tell me you're going to punch me in the face? I said you were about to. I want to tase you if you walk towards my officer again. I didn't I'm walk not, towards hey, anybody. I'm not messing around. Supervisor. You just threatened to punch me in the face. No, he did not. We wanted you to see the raw video unedited. Watch it once, and it goes fast. Let's break it down and add subtitles. I ain't contacting her anymore. I understand the point. What the officer on the right doesn't understand is that Mahasset is about to read the first line of this email between him and his ex-wife. He's not talking to the officer. This is ridiculous, just like you. 
that, no, that, no, no, that's it. No, 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 he's reading the email. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. He's about to keep punching the face. So, you just tell me you're going to punch me in the face? You know what? Did you just tell me you're going to punch me in the face? I said you were about to. This is when they say Lahasset walked towards the officer. I'm going to tase you if you walk towards my officer again. I didn't I'm walk not towards him. I'm not messing around. The supervisor. You just threatened to punch me in the face. No, no he did. did not. You if know what? You, that, you know what? Put your coffee down. <laughs> have, you, have you been tased before? And they arrest you're him. You're about to get lit up. The officers then continued to deny that Officer Carroll threatened to punch Lahasset. No, he did not. I'm, I'm standing here. I've witnessed it, sir. When I watched it, I was in shock. I absolutely couldn't believe um, the way this guy was treated. Jeff exactly. And he would have gotten away. The officers would have gotten away with it if they didn't forget that their body cameras were on. Cameras mean 100% total difference. Lahasset's attorney, Mark Victor, says that this incident raises a lot of questions. For anybody who thinks that police body cams are not a good idea, take a look at this one. He points to the written police report filed in this incident. It doesn't say anything about a second officer being there, about the punch comment, or about a taser being pulled. The second officer also never wrote a report himself. If he didn't have that body camera, there'd be almost no way for you to prove that that happened. There would be none. Absolutely not. Walk up here, I will kill you. I'm not walking up there. Oh, I told you I'm a cop. Make the police here. I'm a target. Leave. Turn around. You leave, I will shoot you. Oh. Yeah, I will. Better show me your ID. The chief says the sergeant making the 911 call is a 19-year veteran of MPA. <coughs> His name is Michael Duke. This all happened back in December, and moments after what you just heard, things got even more heated. According to the sergeant, the man hit him, and so that guy was arrested for assaulting an officer. But the chief says that's not true. The sergeant See? started the physical fight. Now the cop can the be facing sergeant criminal, started criminal charges. It. I'm back out here live. The police union says it is standing by the sergeant. Most of the officers who shot Angel Benitez were not wearing body cameras. So we don't have a clear view of what happened. Just the sound. Driver! With your left hand! Reach and open up the door! Slowly! Step out of the vehicle and face away from us! Then 28 shots, shot both him. bullets and beanbag rounds. According to this notice of claim, a precursor to a lawsuit, the officers should not have fired the deadly shots because Benitez had been complying with their commands. Witnesses say he had his hands up. Well, we've reached out to more than 150 departments in big cities nationwide. At least 69% of them told us that they have added training that teaches officers how to manage unconscious biases that we all have, including race. More than half of those departments say that they've added bias training since Ferguson, but when we asked if it works, most say they don't have a way to measure success. Some officers even told us that it's made their jobs tougher. This is it, guys. I have videotaped many of these incidents um, other cop watchers has done the same. It's very important to get out there and videotape these officers in the line of duty. Spitting Cobra. I'm out.